Hello there. Today we'll be talking about earthquakes. Before we start um, the topic, we're going to be talking about five new words. These words are fault, focus or hypocenter, epicenter, seismic waves, body or surface waves. Now, an earthquake is basically a slipping or a shaking movement of the Earth's crust. The reason why these earthquakes happened are because of tectonic plates. You can assume that these two big pieces of foam are tectonic plates and they are bumping through each other like this. Most earthquakes happen at the boundaries of the tectonic plates. Um, you see, faults happen when um, these tectonic plates, they slip on top of one another. Now, when they do this, this, um, this area, which would be right here, is called the fault. So um, now we'll move on to focus or the hypocenter. So whenever these two tectonic plates, when they start bumping against each other, these tectonic plates release energy. This energy travels like waves and these waves are called seismic waves. Now, since there's so much pressure uh, released that it starts to make a crack under the earth. And when this crack is uh, made under the earth, that crack is called the focus or the hypocenter. Exactly ab above it, which is on the land, exactly above it is called the epicenter. Seismic waves are travel. So if they're underground, they travel straight. While if they're on the surface, like if they're seen on the surface, then they travel on like bumps like that. Whenever these seismic waves, when they move, there are two types of them. One is a P wave and one is an S wave. So um, P waves travel in like a straight line, while S waves, they travel in like bumps and stuff. P waves are more faster than S waves. So um, P waves most, mostly travel um, under the Earth's surface, while S waves travel on the Earth's surface. Now, let's compare these primary and secondary waves to thunder and lightning. Now, you can compare primary waves with um, lightning, and you can compare secondary waves with thunder. As we all know, light is more faster than sound. We can tell primary waves are more faster than secondary waves. So um, some examples I'm going to be using for um, this video is going to be a popsicle stick. Now, I'm going to be trying to break it. Well, as I'm trying to do that, um, there's a lot of pressure trying to resisting me on breaking it. So I'm adding more and more pressure. This is the same thing with tectonic plates. They add more and more pressure. And as this keeps on happening, small cracks start to uh, happen. And eventually, it breaks. And when it breaks, all the pressure that I used is now released. Now, and as, you broke the as I broke the stick, there will be small, tiny vibrations my hands and the popsicle stick made. This is just like the vibrations, just like the seismic waves. I have um, another um, experiment that I'm going to be using in this video. So what I did is I took some, you know, I took some foam and um, I took some marbles under it. And what I did is I put them between the foam pieces. I, ta I taped it with rubber and um, what I'm doing now is I'm going to be shaking it and this this experiment you see is representing how the damage would take on the cities and homes and also how fast and lot big it moves. So another experiment that um, we're going to be using in the video is this one and you see um, I have I just got like a drop of water and I'm going to be pouring it in the still water. So, as you see, um, when I poured it, all the like all the still water started to shake, and it started to ripple. And these ripples, example of seismic waves. So another example I have is this. This would be the Earth's surface, and in the center of it is the focus or hypocenter place. But of course, as we know, that's only underground. On the surface, it would be called the epicenter. Now, um, I just wanted to be a, little, a bit more creative and like. I created this two block of uh, sugar sugar cubes as like you know skyscrapers and these one block as one block as like homes. So I'm gonna be shaking the box which is underneath it and we're going to be seeing which part has the most destructive damage. 
so I shaped it a bit and you see um, a lot of these size skyscrapers started to move a lot and all of them basically fell off some even fell off like here and this would be an example of the destruction that an earthquake would take and also as I noticed um, a lot of the buildings um, around the epicenter took most of the damage and fell very quickly so um before um the main earthquake actually happens sometimes there are these things called foreshocks these foreshocks um, you won't even be able to know them only seismographs will be able to like like know like know them or um these could be like a little bit of shaking movement that um, won't cause any damage or much damage at all now the main shock is the main earthquake where it causes severe damage and does a lot of destruction towards the city or region. And aftershocks happen after the main shock. These are more like the foreshocks who don't even do much damage, but these can continue for a couple days or weeks. So um, scientists are able to tell how an earthquake is moving because of a seismograph. These seismographs measure the movement um, under the earth. I just can tell that um, an earthquake can happen in the area sometime in the future by seismographs readings, but they cannot tell exactly when it will happen.